What's up guys, Cameron here, and today on the MSP show, we are joined by the 13 ranked UFC middleweight, Drekus Duplessis, as he goes on now to face his opponent, Darren Till, for that top 10 spot. We are going to look into the mindset of not only his last fight, but also going into his camp. He's also going to share a few thoughts of what he thinks of the rest of the middleweight division, and he also gives his predictions on some exciting future fights in the UFC. So stay tuned. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Moral of Floral. You'll see in this episode that not only me, but Drickus Duplessis are rocking out our awesome floral shirts. If you want to be the life at any party and you want to grab your Moral of Floral shirts, make sure to go check out moraloffloral.co.za. They are currently stocking limited edition materials. So once these are done, they are done forever. So go check it out. They have adult and kid sizes available so again go check out moral or floral.co.za enjoy the rest of the show Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. So, take two um yeah apologies uh, this should have been out already but we had some technical difficulties so thank you so much trickers duplicy for being here today it's such an honor to have you here in in the makeshift um studio here at my house <laughs> so <laughs> well great to be here uh like we said take two hopefully yeah. today we can uh get this done and <laughs> i'm looking at this light because things were falling down the last time yeah. i was here but thank you for having me head on a swivel always like just yeah just be ready yeah <laughs> i want to jump straight into into just your amazing fight against brad Tavares, which you had which was an absolute I think you put a whole division on notice in that fight, just sh showcasing tremendous uh, work ethic. I think you surprised the commentators as well. We'll chat about that now. But also just a relentless heart right through the fight. I would like us to go through round for round, uh, especially just like starting with that first round, you know, like momentous, like a massive spinning back at the end of the first round. The slip of the, the suplex, which was quite a massive, a massive moment in the fight as well. Just walk us through what, how was that first round going into the first round? And what was your, your take after that first round going into your break? Yeah, you know, going in that first round, obviously uh, being out for a while, uh, with uh, the COVID stuff, we went a lot to travel a lot, and mm. finally the travel, everything was good. So, I mean, I don't believe I really have, uh, have a like a ring rust has never been a problem for me. I don't think that's that's something that played a role. But I was so eager to get get out there. I mean, making history, being the first South African to ever be uh, competing in the top fifteen, getting that yeah. number next to my name, finding a guy like Brad Tavares who's fought. I mean, a guys like Yoel Romero, um, <clears throat> Robert Whittaker the champion Israel Desanya going the distance with uh, two of those guys, two of them, all of them who have held titles. Mm. So for me, that was a, that was a very, very big moment. And uh, I wouldn't say the, that at all the lights got to me. Uh, BMT is one of my strengths, I believe. Going in that, that first round, things were looking great. I mean, I started out, um, I was doing exactly what, what we needed to do. Brad DeVoris is just a very good counter puncher. And I tried, the, in that first round, try to have a bit more of a technical striking match with him because he's been struggling with technical strikers. But obviously, being a 21 fight UFC veteran that he is, and he's an incredible fighter, he he was prepared in, in a very good. It was in very good form. So going on that first round, he did catch me with a punch or two. Uh, immediately felt he didn't have like crazy punch power. So that was, I mean, that's always good if your opponent doesn't have like that one punch knockout yeah. power. But. Uh, you know, I never really wanted to go to the ground. That wasn't the game plan, but uh, I slipped. Uh, I mean, my distance was off and the clinch was, was imminent. And I was like, well, here we are. I picked him up and I felt cool. I'm quite a bit stronger than him. I'm just going to do a very flashy soup play and that didn't work out at all. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Ended up on my back in, in a terrible position, like mm -hmm. flat on my back. And he was on top of me. There was no sweat. So there was no slipping out and trying to create a scramble. Uh, he was basically stuck on top of me. And... Uh, it was weird because people usually struggle quite a lot to keep me on the ground. Mm. And like I tried to get up and it was like, he was really good. He was strong. He was heavy on top. He had heavy hips. And uh, I just immediately realized, welcome to the top 15 in the world. This is yeah. not just a, a fight where, where things are going to go easy. 
uh, eventually got back up. Um, I'm really happy about that. And I was quite frustrated because it felt like we are busy. Firstly, I'm losing this round. Secondly, it's busy to look like a boring fight. Mm -hmm. And then after I got back up, that's when the spinning back landed. Yeah. And uh, I, saw, I sort of started getting my timing a lot better. Going into the, the break, coach... Uh, geez, I can't even 100% remember what he said. Oh, he did say less is more. And yes. that was a very good thing because obviously I wanted to go out there and just bang. Yeah. And he told me to calm down and be more calculated with your strikes. Yeah. But in that same, that same, it's weird because that's what exactly what I needed to do. But at the same time, I need to realize I'm in a fight. Yeah. I'm in here with a, mm -hmm. with a dog of a man. He's a, all of his fights, he's a brawler. He's a guy that, that's how he wouldn't fight by making it a dog fight. Yeah. And I had to go and beat him at that. Well, I decided I'm going to go out and beat him like that. Yeah. Well, that second round, you can see the momentum shift immediately, almost just like you guys meeting in the middle again and then trading blows, but almost you just having that relentless pressure, I think, which was overwhelming for him. And even coach, I say, I think he said like less is more. And then also I think he told you like, he's going to get tired. Yes. Like almost as if you guys knew we can we can we don't have to finish him now we just know we're going to catch him somewhere and i think that's a, a very great confidence you should have in your in your conditioning and your your fitness yes absolutely and brad devore is one of those guys like he's gone five rounds many times he's been there forever and he's never um, lost a fight because he got tired so that was a big question that we had to ask um in the fight that's the only way to see will he be able to um to match my pace and yeah and I could see in that second round, especially in the beginning, he still came out with a lot of confidence because he knew he had that first round. But I would say halfway through the second round, he started fading and he yeah. started. And then I caught him with a few big punches and I started gaining momentum in, yeah. that, in that second round. And uh, second round, I really started landing, landing uh, at the end of my punches, landing hard blows. I caught him with a big knee to cut him open. Yes. And I could see the momentum of the fight shift and that the pace was just overwhelming for him. Do you think the momentum shifted with that knee? Because I think like that was a massive <clears throat> moment. Him like stepping back and then retreating on his back foot most of the round after that. Yeah, I think the knee had a, definitely played quite a big role in, in the momentum <laughs> shifting because it, yeah. it was a really solid knee. And uh, there was quite a few hard stuff I landed in that in that round and his shots didn't land like it did in the first round and I almost settled into the rhythm of the fight I settled I, I started I then I had his timing I had everything going landed I started landing I think I landed another big spinning back first mm. and uh, at the end of the second round that's when I caught him with the I, went, I think it was a straight right left hook yeah and he he stumbled down uh he didn't fall. I didn't yeah, uh, drop him, but him. I rocked him. And yeah. there was 10 seconds left. And I caught him in the clinch. And as I got him in the clinch, I, I need him straight on the buzzer. And I still remember going to the corner. And I had one of these two stuck in my knee. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was uh, really crazy. And, uh, I mean, how tough is that guy? I mean, I, I rocked him with that left hook. And I mm. caught him with a massive knee just on the buzzer. But, I mean, I could feel him being rocked. But it didn't look like it was going to get out of there at all. Yeah. What was the... Like there was a in, in on stream watching the fight, you can actually see you guys in at the start of the third round. You both stand up, like maybe two three seconds before you really have to because you guys are like ready to go into that third round. You have like a massive smile on your face, knowing like this is a tough fight, but I'm here for it. He also has like a smirk, knowing maybe knowing it's one one, and now the third one is up for it. What was your mindset going into that third round? In my mind, and I was right, that's how the judges scored it too, he definitely won that first round, I definitely had the second round. So going into that third round, I looked over to him and he was full of blood, and I was also full of blood, but not mine, it was all his. So <laughs> yeah. He kind of smirked back at me, and but I could see, as he smirked, he looked down, he didn't want to, like, he knew he was in for a fight, and I don't say he already lost the fight in his head, but mm. he almost realized, listen, this guy came to fight, this guy yeah. wants this, and... My spa was more one of firstly winning that mental, mental battle and secondly smiling because the crowd was going absolutely crazy and knowing, listen, this is a performance that I want to be giving him. That let's see who has it. Let's see who's the, who's the baddest man in here. Yeah. And that third round was, I mean, it was absolutely crazy. I, at a stage, I thought his corner might throw, throw in the towel. Mm. I mean, I was just, he still caught me with punches, but in that third round, I almost went to, in my mind, was I threw defense I mean, obviously still defending because somebody can catch you at any yeah. time, but 
a bit more disregard for his offense because he was so wobbled and so he took so many big punches and he was tired mm. that his punches didn't have snap anymore. It wasn't like, I mean, he kicked me in the head. I didn't even block that head kick. I wasn't planned not to block it, yeah. but even a straight head kick didn't rock me at all. Didn't, yeah. it, it felt like a jab. And uh, I just started gaining on him and halfway through that third round, I, it was like, I was like, now I'm not here to win this fight anymore. I'm already a there yeah now i'm here to finish spectacularly and i gave it my all it wasn't for a lack of trying but that guy just wouldn't go down yeah. something that's quite massive right through the fight as well and i think a lot of south africans were pretty frustrated was the the commentating and eventually you saw it shift as well you know like daniel cormier also said like he looks tired but he just keeps on going at that same pace does that bother you at all hearing that like watching the fights back or is it just something that you have accepted like i i, I do look tired but yeah well like, i mean watch me not get tired <laughs> um, i'm very good friends with dirk Camp. he was yeah. the ufc commentator and he used to i always used to thought listen man we're very good friends like we yeah. go have lunch or breakfast on weekends and this guy's just here slandering me the whole time every time <laughs> we fight and just saying how tired i look and i'm like i'm not tired it's the first round yeah and uh then Joe Rogan said it and Daniel Cormier started saying every single five people are like, it looks like he's getting tired. And I'm like, I'm not tired. <laughs> I'm, not. I'm not tired. But it's just the way I breathe. Um, yes. The nose doesn't quite work the way it, it used to. So I breathe through my mouth. And um, when, I, when I see myself, body language, I always do look tired, but I'm not. That's just the way I look. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. look tired when I fight. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I felt... The, the worst thing, like in that fight, you hear in the commentary afterwards, it, it was a much worse fight for me than it actually was. Mm. The commentary, especially in the first two rounds, wasn't really going my way. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's also the all American commentary and uh, DC has, has been known for being very biased and he is. So, <laughs> in my opinion. And... Um, yeah, I made some mistakes. I made some mistakes, but I mean, that's the, that's the fight game. You're not going to have the perfect performance always. But yeah, I think uh, the way that I look tired, but I just keep on going. That's the way I fight. I know I, I do get tired, but I know my opponent is more tired because yeah. I'm used to, uh, that's the way I train. That's the way I've always fight. So for them to be able, yes, I'm tired, but I promise you they feel it worse than I do. Yeah, massive pace, insane power. And I think also something that I think like, there was 20 seconds left of the fight and then you could already hear over stream just the fans like you guys did enough you know yeah like, well absolutely done. yeah <laughs> like, that was amazing um what is the biggest positive you take away from this fight was what, what is the thing you're most happy about that matchup and how the fight ended well i think the pressure of having all my fights being finishes in 19 fights i'll have my 20 20th fight now uh that was my 19th fight and all my wins have come by way of finish. And it was almost, I wouldn't say pressure, but it was almost like, I was always like, well, I have to finish this guy. And that's not a bad thing at all. Mm -hmm. Chasing that finish, not at all. But I had my first decision and I'm just really glad it wasn't like one of those decisions where somebody laid on top of each other. And yeah. I, that's a boring fight. Yeah. It was a decision that, that I would have loved another round to yes. get that finish. <laughs> yeah. And that was all that was going through my mind that third round was... I have to put this guy out. I, I want to get that finished because mm. I don't want a judge to win me a fight. I want to win this fight. So the big positive was that's gone. That's And I mean, yeah. like I said, after the fight, if, if I get a, a decision win like that, I'm happy with it because it, it was a badass fight. People loved it and it was entertaining. That's what it's all about. A lot of decisions you get, you get a lot of decisions that are just not entertaining fights. Yeah. And people love to see a good finish. Yeah. So that's not changing at all. But uh, I guess that's that's one thing that's out of the way. Another thing that I took away from that is fighting on a, a another big pay per view event and almost proving to a lot of people because a lot of people was like, okay, listen, he has two knockouts mm -hmm. uh, very early in the fights. Um, but what the way he fights, my pace, everything, people just assume that I will get tired to show them that listen, if this goes to deep waters. You're gonna have a bad night still. I yeah. don't have to finish you early. I can finish you later on. I still, I still have whatever. I'll still do whatever I need to do in a 15-minute fight. There's no way I'll be getting too so tired that I can't 
do enough to finish a fight. Yeah. I think they brought up an interesting stat. The only guy that has landed more shots on Brad Tavares is Israel Adesanya and that it was also in a five-round fight. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I think without a doubt, if that was for five rounds, you would have out outstruck him. But absolutely, five. I think he landed like thirty strikes more. Yeah, and I averaged on landing fifty-four punches per round. That is that was the average. So <laughs> I think I would have smoked this record yeah. if I if I I don't think actually I don't. I think if there was another round, I would have finished that fight. Yeah, Brad Tavares had nothing left after that that third round. Uh, I was uh, if I had my minute break, I would have been ready to go again. Yeah. So that's another positive. I mean, I didn't just prove it to people; I pro proved it to myself, which is even more important. Yeah. Having the like you said, having the trust in your conditioning and knowing whatever we're doing to for strength, conditioning, uh, being fit and the way I fight, I can maintain that, the full fight distance. That's yeah. a big win for me because that gives you the confidence going into the next one. Okay. What is the what is the biggest thing, looking back at the fight or watching, I'm pretty sure you've watched that fight about close to two, three, four hundred times. <laughs> what, yeah. is the, what is the thing that you so look at and you're like, okay, we're going to have to fix this going into your next matchup. What, what is some of the key takeaways you already started working on when back in camp? Well, firstly, um, the wrestling uh, level in the UFC is absolutely incredible. I mean, Brad DeVos, I picked him up from the ground, but it's still, I mean, I was like, okay, cool. I have my hands around his waist. I'm definitely getting the takedown, and he's just defended, and he was so good at defending those takedowns. So that's one thing. Uh, setting up the takedowns better was definitely one thing that uh, we immediately started working on. Another thing was um, working on maybe not getting so excited when when you catch something like I, I tend to get very excited when i fight uh like i want to go in there and i want to take your head off from the start mm -hmm. where get go maybe be a little bit more calm and a bit, a bit more how can i say precise with my with my punches and not just steamroll yeah because that's something that i tend to do when i get excited but once again for that fight i believe that was the key to victory i believe uh the, the steamroll was what got me that fight because he's a counter puncher and I had to throw those almost falling over my own feet, lunging punches, lunging in for him and throwing with power the whole time because he's a counter puncher. So he's waiting for me to punch then he's going to throw his, yeah. his strikes. But with the amount of power that I threw while lunging in like that, he had to block before he could strike and I was out of the way the whole time. Yeah. So that was... It was almost like I had to improvise during the fight. But I mean, definitely staying a little bit more calm, staying a little bit more composed when yeah. when, when you, you're facing some adversity and when you get excited and, and chasing that finish. Yeah, that's great. I want to play a game. We call it First Thought. And uh, I'm going to just call out some names. It can be fighters. It can be someone in, in the industry. Can I throw another beer for you? Yes, of course you can. Uh, so, Cammy and me, obviously. <laughs> Cammy representing Buffalo Fontaine. Yeah. Yeah. 100%, without a doubt. Um, listen, uh, no hate. Mayor, no hate. <laughs> Bevo Santain, big fan uh, of the karate water and everything. <laughs> but I'm a Henny's man myself. So like you can see, it's the battle of the brands. And can your glass uh, freeze itself? Can you put it in the freezer and then there's some nice water freezing? Because mine can. My glass yes. cannot freeze, but something I've seen you do, if the body gets hard... And you end the of Buffels Fontaine. All tight. Every damn time. Okay. So <laughs> we might end with the Buffels Fontaine. That is very, very true. Yeah. But we always start with the ice cold beer. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you can be the finisher. Like when everybody's going home, okay, cool. I'll be the party start. <laughs> party start. It, does Henny have Bolton Croquette? Does Henny? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they do not. But they do have a Bolton Platter. Okay, well, so, we'll just agree to disagree. That's like those Bolton croquettes. I've I've probably ordered like 150 plates of those things. They come in little balls of six. Top tier, N like nothing. They beats are amazing. That. I've had them. <laughs> I've had them a few times, but ah. Uh, what did I, you drink like with that? What did I drink? Well, yeah, with a Bolton croquette. A beer. <laughs> no, I, don't drink, I don't drink brandy. Uh -uh. <laughs> Depending what time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, both amazing, uh, both amazing yeah. restaurants, and uh, be sure to check them out. Yeah, shout I mean, out to Rika, shout out to Mayer, Annie's, Buffalo's Fontaine. You guys are great. Cheers, yeah. Cheers, cheers.
Okay, so we're going to play a game, first thoughts. So I'm just going to call out some names. You can say a word, a sentence, you can say whatever you want, just the first initial thoughts. Well, thank you. That's mighty water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's. Are you nervous? No. Uh, no, no, uh, not nervous. Can I just cut? <laughs> Okay, so the first. <laughs> okay, okay, let's the go. First, let's do this. The first thought. Okay, ready. Charles Oliveira. Lightweight goat. Okay, that that's interesting. You think he's gonna go down as the lightweight goat? Absolutely. Okay, that's great. Islam Makhachev. <laughs> 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 Come on, is that, that, does that count? That, that's perfect. That's great. I want to chat about that, but okay. Brandon Moreno. Nicest guy in the world. <laughs> okay, cool. Yuri Prochaska. A bit overrated. <laughs> okay. But he is a specimen of a man. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I just think he needs to prove himself. A little bit. Okay, okay, cool. Do you think he proves himself if he fights Glover to Shira? No. Okay. Glover is too old. Okay. Who do you think, if he beats him and you like, okay, well done. It's a tough division right yeah. now. I, I would like a fight against Jan Blahovic. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Michael Chandler. Massive fan. Cool. John Jones. <laughs> <laughs> the GOAT for now. Okay. Darren Till. Um, has been. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, just back on that Islam Makhachev one. <laughs> <Going. laughs> um, do you think, obviously, their fight is scheduled? It's in Abu Dhabi. I think it's in like one or two weeks. If yeah, I'm not two mistaken. weeks. Yeah, two weeks out. Yeah. yeah, I think it was two weeks on Sunday. Great fight. Wow. The great card as a whole. Amazing card. How do you see that fight playing out? What do you think happens in that fight? Well, I mean, listen, me saying to Islam can't take away the fact that this guy can wrestle and grapple yeah. like a very very little people grappling technically no but his pressure on top is incredible he's an incredible incredible wrestler i think uh he's always getting the comparison to Khabib, and i think Khabib is better at mm. what they are good at which oh. is that top pressure than islam yes but i do think islam has a little bit better striking that than Khabib had but i don't think he has enough striking to beat anybody with striking yeah so now you're going to get the question when he's – and that reaction was purely on the fight with Charlie Olives. Yes. Charlie Oliveira has great wrestling. He has incredible striking. And he's on the ground, the, in my opinion, the best in the UFC. Mm. He's yeah. the best grappler in the UFC. 100%. So if he does get it and from his, from his back – yeah. And if you, he has the most wins by submission in the UFC, if I'm not mistaken, but he, he has 14 guillotine wins, I think. That is, that's absolutely that's insane. That's insane in the <laughs> UFC. So now you have to ask yourself the question, is the market chef has one game plan in this whole fight, and that is to shoot on him, mm. have top control. You have to realize if you make one mistake with that shot, you're yeah. getting choked. Yeah. And even if you're on top of Charlie, Charles Oliveira, he has some of the best defensive jiu-jitsu and attacking from his back yeah. that I've ever seen. So, you know, that gives me, if you go on points, yes, I would say Islam has the better wrestling. Mm. But what does that help you when you get to the ground and now you're in trouble again? Yes. In the striking, he's for sure he's going to be in trouble. So, that's why I'm saying he is really good, but... I don't see him winning Charles Olivier. Yeah. Not the Charles Olivier we've seen in the past year and a half, two years. Mm. I mean, he's beaten the whole top five in one and a half years. Yes, yeah. That is that is insane. That is that is that is scary. <laughs> goat stuff. That's yeah. what goats are made of. Yeah. And uh, I, I I just respect him so much. I think he's big for the weight. He used to fight at one forty five, which is insane. Mm. But uh, you know, I'm obviously a little bit biased by by this because. <laughs> I'm just a Charles Oliveira fan. Yeah. And Islam Makhachev tends to have boring fights, in my opinion. Yeah. So I don't like to see him fight that much. So I really don't want him to be the champion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's Islam is one of those fighters, a lot like Prochaska as well. Like, I think he has to prove himself because he hasn't fought to anyone in. Yeah, Prochaska. Like, you know. I might have been a little bit harsh in my um, opinion on him. Yeah. I think, I mean, he did great things against Dominic Reyes. Yes. But Dominic Reyes. 
just came off a loss. Mm. And he beat Glover Teixeira, who is a great fighter, but yeah. Glover Teixeira is, what, 45 40, years old, 44 yeah, 40, years old? Yeah. So, I mean, Baraska, I think he's the youngest champion at this stage, 29 years old. Mm. That is impressive. And he's a like he's one of those true martial artists. So I'm not hating on him at all. Yeah. I'm a, I, I am a fan. Yeah. I just comparing him to... It's hard because, I mean, he's standing in the shoes of John Jones. John Jones, yeah. So that's what, what he's being compared to. So it's not really a fair comparison, but I think he's very promising. And I think he can be, if he keeps up with doing what he's doing, he can be great. Yeah. Just not yet. Yes. Okay. And uh, obviously, you, you've trained a few times at Sanford. Um, I, I'm, I'm guessing you've met Michael Chandler, tr trained with him. What do you think about his fight with Dustin Poirier coming up soon? Yeah, I'm a massive fan. I, I've trained with, with Michael Chandler, been a fan of his since his Bellator days. Yeah. Uh, met him when I, 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 I've i been cross training with uh, Sanford MMA quite a few times. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been an amazing experience. I'm a, a lot of great people out there, Coach Henry Hooft. The whole Sanford team, uh, the Killcliffe FC now, yeah. the the rebranding, amazing people there, amazing team, and it, it, it's incredible to go and learn from them and uh, see where we're at and, and compare myself to some of the likes of Kamara Usman training there, Michael Chandler training there, Anthony Johnson, um, Michael Johnson, yeah, all the Angla, all these guys that have like made it so far in, in this industry and has been here for such a long time, training amongst those. And seeing where you fit in, it's, it's amazing. And they have, they have uh, Coach Greg Jones. He's a uh, he's a wrestling Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. All American. I don't know how many times he's five times. He's he's incredible. So, I mean, so I went trained there, met Michael Chandler, and he was super super nice, uh, very nice guy. Yeah. And what I admired most, I mean, he didn't have to be nice to me, but he was. But his his work ethic. That's something that I really looked up to. He preaches it. But he practices it too. He's like one of those guys. He's just always when he trains. It's like that's how I always feel when I train. I don't want to train if I have to train at sixty percent. I want to yeah. train and I want to go. Yeah. Because that's what I'm there for. Otherwise, I'm wasting my time. Mm. So that's why with uh, with Michael Chandler, that's one thing that I really admire is how dedicated he is, how inspiring he is. Because after training, he would when we circle up seventy pro guys. And he would call people out on listen, you had a shit training session. You oh, were wow. you were okay. like you weren't training like you should. Yeah. And that's something I try to do at CIT too. Of course. When, <laughs> when the guys because at the end of the day we are proud of our gym, we're proud of our team. Yeah. And that's the way he feels. And he wants to be we want to be surrounded with like minded people. Mm -hmm. If you surround yourself with six average people, you will be average yourself. Yeah. If you want to be better, you have to surround yourself with better people. And that's what he wants for his team. And that's the same that we want for our team. He's saying, listen, guys, if you're not going to step up, then you're dragging the whole team down. Yeah. And he calls people on and, and he, you will never see him having a slow session. He's yeah. just always like really training hard. And like, I'm, a, I'm a very big fan because he, you can't name one of his fights that's not entertaining. That guy goes up there and he goes, <laughs> yes. man. And like Exactly like I would say in the in Brad DeVos fight. He gets tired, but he's used to being there because yeah. that's the way he trains. Yeah, and just looking at the guys that he he came into the UFC and just the guys he has fought is not, <laughs> is not <laughs> as been scans, nothing, nothing of those sort. But every single time you're like, take my money, I want to watch you fight. Absolutely. And it's so cool hearing you say that he's he's almost like an enforcer in the gym as well he's yes, just absolutely. like he's making yeah. sure and just like yesterday you did that the same with in our grappling class you were like guys like you need to know this shit by now like yes, i think absolutely. the standard is so high and i think if your standard is high the whole standard of the gym will increase as well yeah and absolutely and it's not only for that it's also you know, i'm thinking about myself call yeah. me selfish if you will but remember if the team gets better the guys that i train with get better yes i get better yeah so we can't be like yesterday when I called the, some of the guys out, it was purely because we were wasting time, a whole session on stuff that we should have been known. We should be known. We, we, there's no time for that in class to be taught that. That's yeah. stuff you work on in your own. Yeah. And if you don't have the education to do that, you're in the wrong sport. Yeah. And uh, not that I'm saying those guys are at all. I'm just saying you have to know that in your mind. If you don't have the willingness to go and better yourself after training with the small stuff that you struggle with, you will never make it in this game. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very. 
And also to get to your question, the Poye fight, that's going to be the coolest fight I think ever. <laughs> that's going to be, be a, insane. It's going to be a banger. I, I, I don't know if it's a five-round fight, though. I no, think it's, it's three-rounders. Three three so the pace is going to be oh, It's going to be insane. It's going to be one of those fights, like both of those guys have massive gas tanks. Yeah. Guarantee you, first round, both of them are tied. And they're going <laughs> yeah. to use that minute to come out and just yeah, do the exact same thing in that second. It's going to be insane. Yeah, I really hope they are like breathing out of their mouth by the second round just so that you can see, okay, what's left? What's yes. that far card type of... And also hoping that the commentators say they look tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously now y your fight has been announced. It's official. You are fighting Darren Till. Just your first thoughts. Obviously, you you know, you've known for a while you are you are going to eventually, I think it's one of those things like we've already said, eventually you'll face him. I think you've predicted that yes. for a long time. What do you think when it's now official, it's pen to paper, what is your thoughts of the fight? How do you see it going? And how has the start of camp, how has that been? Yeah, well, um, camp's only starting in a week. Okay. In a, a week's time, we're starting with the official camp eight mm -hmm. weeks out. He's one of those guys, I've always looked up to him, always been... Like, in a sense that I like his style. I like the way he fights. He came in when he was at welterweight. He came in with a bang. Yeah. He lost the title fight. And then he went off the rails a little, I think. I think he, when he moved up to middleweight, I don't say, I can't, because he was a big welterweight. He, it feels like he almost said, okay, cool. Now I'm at middleweight easier. Now I don't have to mm. diet. Now I have to, don't work. And he almost was like I can eat what I want I can do what I want and he came in that middleweight fight and he wasn't in shape yes. that was the problem he was yeah he didn't have to cut all that weight but he wasn't a big middleweight now mm. he was out of shape middleweight yeah. and that was the, the his downfall in his loss that's why he's only ha he's what, one and four in yeah. his last five and um, that's the thing like if you want to go up a weight it's not less work it's more work mm. yeah. you have to be Get your body used to fighting bigger, stronger guys. Yeah. You have to get your body used to carrying that weight and fighting with it. Because you can't just go as a welterweight and go fight middleweight. It's easy, yeah, sure. But you're not going to perform the way you should. And that's one thing I saw. But uh, really happy about this fight. I mean, he's a massive, massive name. Probably one of the most well-known guys in the in the UFC. Yeah. And even though he's been on his kid, I have no doubt in my mind that I'm going to fight the best there until to date. He's pulled out of a few fights. He knows he has to come out there and prove something. Yeah. Otherwise, he's basically done for. Yeah. So I think he's going to come out there with with all the. I think we might see the best Darren to date, and yeah. I'm really excited for that because that'll make me proving that that even the best Darren Till, the number eight or nine in the world, can't hang with me and that I belong in that top ten. Yeah. So I'm really happy about that. There is one thing that really concerns me is. So, for those who don't know, me and Cameron, we've been training together for almost almost 10 years now. <laughs> I know almost already where this is going. And oh, Cameron yes. was asked, who is his favorite middleweight? <laughs> and Cameron's answer was Darren Till. So, <laughs> we might be having, yes. sitting here with an informant, informant. In, in, in the gym, and even though we do all our training sessions together. So, Darren, if you need some info. Yeah, Darren, check your DMs, my yeah. man. <laughs> so, I mean, that's concerning because, you know, Cami knows me better than anybody than, uh, in my fight career. He trains with me every single day. And his favorite, and this is while I was in the UFC, UFC middleweight in the world, is Darren Till. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I have to fight him. So yeah, I'm his friend, but I'm not his favorite fighter. So our, our one of our um, coaches and, and Pat, all the mental coach, you know, Henny, he he brought up this this absolute bullshit story of me just saying like, you know, that's my favorite middleweight. And then at once I decided. Like, okay, it's explain gonna, yourself. It's just, explain yourself. Let's <laughs> okay, hear. It. Let's okay. hear. Because I know this was a yeah, discussion. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. didn't completely make it up. I just want to hear. Explain yourself. So he asked me. And and he does this a lot. He does this. He uh, he like twists your words. He tries to trick you. To get, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So he asked me, at that stage, he said, "Who do I think will be a top prospect at middleweight?" And I said, "Well, Darren Till is looking quite." So I was in good. the UFC at that stage when he asked. No, this. no, no. No, yes, I was. No, 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 no. This is years. No, this is like. I remember when how I got you with this was I told you the UFC signed me. But they want me to fight there until. Yes. And, and that's how we caught you. And I was like, no, I can't do it because he's really too good for me. And, and then I. 
and, and then I told you, no, don't say that. You're going to kick his ass. But you said it. <laughs> so, yeah, so well, a prospect, well, the guy that's already in the vision, his top prospect is down. <laughs> but, so I'm going to beat your prospect friend. Dude. <laughs> but, but I told myself I'm not going to have this, have this bother me anymore. But, any. <laughs> well, it all will be settled December 10th. Yeah. <laughs> and Cameron is probably going to be like, well, I mean, not that I'm saying he's not going to root for me, but he's, I, don't, I know where his money will be. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the guys that Darren Till trains with as well, and we, we've spoken about the influence, you, you, the guys you have that you surround yourself with, is obviously obviously comes out to and yes. um what do you think what is what is your thoughts about comes performances so far and what effect do you think that has on darren till's career or his future performances so this can go one of two ways first it comes out is he's an incredible fighter mm. make no mistake he's an incredible fighter um i believe his last fight was I mean, he went in against a black belt that took a fight on, what, 48 hours notice? Yes. I'm not sure. But he is a phenomenal fighter. You don't get the kind of credentials he has with the amount of punishments he, he takes. All I am saying is he there was a lot of hype around him being the best in the world and like until he fought Gilbert Burns, yeah. which is an incredible fight. And stepping up, man, I've trained, I trained with Gilbert Burns. I'm a massive fan of Gilbert mm. Burns. He's the nicest guy. He's extremely hardworking. He's really good. Yeah, But... That fight, in my opinion, I think Gilbert edged the decision. Yeah, it could have gone either way. I agree, but uh, in my opinion, call it bias because I know him and I'm a friend of his. I think he edged that decision, but that showed that comes out needs to no. Listen, you can be gangsta gangsta all you want, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you have to you have to fight the best in the world, and that's yeah. a fight. No 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 amount of talking is going to help you once you get in there. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad he got that test. And but there's one thing that really bothered me um, in his last performance. Yes, he did get a very quick uh, submission win over Kevin Holland. Mm. But his antics—not antics. Firstly, missing weight yeah. with three kilograms or seven pounds. Yeah, eight pounds. Yeah, that is ridiculous. That is <laughs> that's like not even trying. And that's so disrespectful to anybody that cuts weight. If if you are somebody that has cut weight or has been in the presence of somebody cutting weight, then you realize the disrespect he showed by missing weight that far. Mm. And there, the story about the doctors, I don't buy that. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You make weight, you don't get a better opportunity. Yeah. You make weight. Yes. And if you miss weight, you say you're sorry, you, well, you don't miss weight. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're a professional. Start you get paid to, to make weight. But you don't go out there saying fuck you to everybody like I'm not here about the weight. No, that's yeah. the way the sport works. Nobody likes to make the weight. I don't make, like to make the weight. Nobody does. But it's part of the game. Mm. And he was very disrespectful towards every fighter that's ever had to go through a how to make, make weight. He was disrespectful to his opponent. And he was disrespectful to every single fan yeah. that respects him as an athlete. Yeah. Because he showed complete disrespect. So... This and then after the fight, the same thing. So this comes back to, yes, what influence does he have on Darren Till? Maybe Darren Till is a little bit more committed because comes that looks like a guy that always trains. Mm. Maybe Darren Till gets a little bit better wrestling training. Yeah. Because comes that's in a wrestling camp, he's a wrestler. All that things, are, the change is good for him. I, yeah. I get that. But then you have to ask yourself, what effect does Darren Till have on comes that? Yeah. Yeah, is, that's a very good question. Is is Darren Till is one of those guys? His personality is almost like you can see it. People are drawn to him. He's a yeah. he's a like you laugh at his stuff when he's at <laughs> press conferences. He says smart stuff. He's a likable guy, mm -hmm. but what effect does he have on Kamzat? Yeah, does he affect Kamzat in a negative way? Because you you've never seen this from Kamzat. Yeah, the gangster, gangster, <laughs> and now but now since Smash Brothers. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's almost like comes out got this. Listen, I don't give a shit. Uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's, he he changed completely. So mm -hmm. you have to ask yourself. And that was a winning recipe. He's never been beaten. So yes. why would you change that? Why yeah. would comes out change his winning recipe? He was already big. He was already hyped up. P 
people were already knowing his name. It wasn't like he needed to create it, more hype. It wasn't even needed for him to say a single word. Just the, his fighting said enough. That's like, it. That's everyone it. So wanted to watch Then him. you have to ask yourself that. What effect yeah. does Darren Sol have? Because there's nothing good that Darren Sol can bring to comes out. Let's, let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's he doesn't very, he doesn't have anything that comes up needs. Yeah, in terms of fighting, that is that's very interesting. I've never I've always thought about what what impact it will have on, on Darren Till. Obviously, you fighting him, so having that guy in your camp, I think, can be a massive asset. If Absolutely, you, if you use it well, yes. if if you are smart and professional about it. But yeah, that is they there is some footage of uh, Till now doing like very stand up heavy like doing pads he went to thailand he trained there do you think do you think all of that is with you in mind obviously he knows you you guys are fighting yeah do you think he's preparing for for a stand-up fight what what were your initial thoughts when you saw that footage well i mean you never know it's, nobody's going to really give it give all of, all away on on social media yeah. and try and like in any game then so i think darren Till is not a He's not an idiot. He's he's fight. He's number nine in the world. He used to be number six or five, I think. Mm. So Darren Till won't be coming into this fight just for being for stand up, or just for being for wrestling, or just for grappling. He'll be good everywhere. He'll yeah. be prepared everywhere. And that's how I'm preparing. I'm preparing every single fight. Uh, if it goes to the ground, yes. And uh, I don't know where he's going to end up. Mm. Are we going to strike? I'll see you in the fight whether I like it on the feet, whether I like it in the grappling, yeah. whether I like it in the clinch. That, there's only one way to find out, and that's training everything always, yeah. making sure. I, my game plan is not uh, opponent-specific that much. My game plan is my fight-specific okay. and doing what I do do good. So I think... Obviously, Darren Till is not going to turn into a wrestler. Yeah, he's been training with Kamzat for two years, but it's been on and off. He's had injuries to deal with, this mm. and that. So uh, there's no way he turned into a wrestler. Trust me, you don't become a wrestler in two in two years. Yeah, I've been training wrestling, uh, very wrestling heavy uh, career, my fight style for ten years. Yeah, and only I've been my background is striking, and uh, for me, everybody considers me a striker, and I'm I'm happy with that because yeah, that's what I did. I yeah. strike. So you better know, like once you see my wrestling and grappling, then you'll realize, oh, he's not a striker because I'm not. I'm an MMA fighter and yeah. I'm an MMA athlete. Wherever the fight goes, that's where my strength lies. Yeah. In in okay, so when you beat Darren Till, that's one of the guys that he, you almost predicted, like you are gonna meet up with him. Yeah, there's always there's, there's sometimes there's, there's, there's guys like you, you just, just see them, you're like, oh, you Brad the Boys. I just felt it way before. Yeah. Like, a year before we fought, I just yeah. felt like when I saw him fight, I was like, "Yes, he, he's a tough dude." Yeah, and it just I just had that feeling. Ah, we're yeah. probably gonna fight. Yeah, and Darren Till was the same. Is there anyone in that in that middleweight division that you have the same same almost prediction, or you would maybe like to fight them? You would like to test your skills against someone in that top ten? I would love to fight Paulo Costa. I think he's a big, uh, big guy. I think he's a big, yeah. big name and he's a scary dude he's a big middleweight but i don't think he realizes how big i am and yeah. I, I he's one of those guys that that's going to be a fun fight but other than that robert whitaker is the guy that i uh, i think robert whitaker gives me the hardest fight in the whole of the uh ufc middleweight division that is interesting i that's... think he, he he's the hardest fight for me in that division just purely because of his grit the way yeah. he's a tough guy he can take a punch he can wrestle really, really well. Mm -hmm. He can grapple really well and very durable and he has incredible striking. Yeah. So I think that's a guy that I would love to face to, you know, once I beat Robert Whitaker, I am the champion. Yes. That is a fact. Yeah. Even though the champion did beat him, styles make fights. Yes. And I think Robert Whitaker has a style that uh, doesn't give me problems. I just think he has that style that we are going to have a war. Yeah. on our hands and uh, that's something I really look forward to that's awesome I know because he's kind of not the gatekeeper of the division but the gatekeeper to the title yes he is the off in a world where Adesanya is not there yeah I think uh, Whitaker is the champion yeah but then again on that note with uh, Pereira and Adesanya coming up I think Pereira can beat Adesanya but I think Robert Whitaker smashes Pereira that is that is MMA math. That it, is MMA it doesn't math. Make I, sense, it doesn't make sense, but yeah, that's how it is. 100%. I think uh, Adesanya is very good uh, defensive wrestling. He yeah. does. 
Uh, he's been doing it his whole career, the fiending takedowns. He's really, really good at it. And I don't think Barrera has the experience mm. or the the wrestling credentials yet. He's, he has yes. six or seven pro fights to deal with a guy like Robert Whittaker's wrestling. Yeah. But he can deal with a guy like Adesanya's wrestling because Adesanya's not a wrestler. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting. That That's a great... So is, is is your prediction like Pereira beats Adesanya? That is very tough. I think that's the, one of the toughest fights to call. That's a very year. tough tough fight. You know, yeah. Pereira has beaten twice in kickboxing matches. This is an MMA fight, but mm. that depends. If it's a kickboxing match, if Israel Adesanya goes and tries to kickbox with him, yeah, sure. Yeah. But if I'm Adesanya... He's had an, he has the best teammates around him. He mm. trains with uh, a lot of good wrestling guys. He has enough in his corner, enough in his kit bag to say, okay, this is the one fight where I can be a May fight, not a striker. Yeah. And go out and not prove anything by beating Pereira at striking, but going out there and beating him at MMA because this is what it is. Mm. And maybe getting a takedown, his first takedown ever. Yeah. Getting, uh, going out there and I think he got his purple belt from ATOS, I think. Mm. Going there and proving your purple belt. Yeah. Going out there and... Sure, you have your strikes always. You're a striker, but go out there and be an MMA fighter for once. Yeah. Okay, great. If if Adesanya beats Pereira, what do, what do you think... Do you think Adesanya is going to last long in in the division like there has been like a lot of guys are predicting that he'll he'll retire soon uh some guys think he'll he'll still reign for well he's gonna try and still reign for a few years what do you think happens if if you're in his position where like i don't think he needs to fight anymore do you think like if he beats Pereira, he's he's done uh, as far as i know he just signed another contract with the usc okay <sighs> that is a yeah, if he beats Pereira, I don't think he's maybe, maybe he's done. Yeah. I don't know people has been talking about it, but he said no. So yeah, out of out of the horse's mouth. <laughs> yeah, he, probably see, he said no. no. I think. He's, yeah. uh, but you know, uh, that decision can just change over mm -hmm. over overnight. Yeah, so it's gonna be interesting to see because Adesanya is a great champion. He's really really good. Mm. Uh, his last few performances didn't impress me at all. He did just enough to win. He really did. He did yeah. win all those fights, but it wasn't. That's not the way a champion should be fighting. Yeah. So if he lost that hunger, that's the time to hang it up. Yeah. Now, you like Yosha and I have talked about it a lot. I've spoken about it with Steph and Hanru on the podcast as well. Obviously, our dream matchup would be a UFC Africa event in South Africa. You versus Adesanya for the middleweight title. Do you see that happening? And Absolutely. Do you see that happening? Absolutely. That's why yeah. I, I really hope Adesanya stays champion because undisputed champion. I yeah. want to be the guy to beat him. Yeah. I don't want to be the guy who beat somebody wins the belt for one fight, then I beat him. It's almost like that guy got lucky, won the belt, now I won the belt. No, this, listen, winning the UFC World Championship is, is, is no joke. Yeah. And when I do it, I do not want to fight anybody else than the guy that's truly the the champion. Yes. And Adesanya is truly the champion. Yeah. He's unbeaten in the middleweight division. He's an incredible fighter. And I want to beat him on home swell for that belt. That would be I think I think the the Can blocks... I rephrase? I am going to beat him on okay. home swell Great. for that belt. <laughs> I think the we've seen the Still Knox riot in full force and usually uh, okay, so just we're not claiming anything, but where they are, it happens that something breaks sometimes, especially when, when like most of the time. <laughs> I'm Imagine. backstage. I can't confirm Northern Night. <laughs> Do you? If it's at a well, Sun Arena is about. I think you can squeeze in ten thousand people here in Pretoria. Yeah, ten thousand. I think. Yeah, uh... people have been saying obviously Loftus Fashfalt. The home of the Bulls. The home of the Bulls. <laughs> I honestly think uh, Pretoria will be great because it's a hometown. But, yeah. you know, when we fight, when the UFC comes to Africa, there's no better way of place for them Cape Town Cape to actually. Town. You know, it's a very tourist-friendly place. Yeah. It's a, it's an amazing place. Most, I of, think, the, most of the parts are tourist-friendly. Yeah, it's most parts are <laughs> tourist-friendly. Yeah. So I think Cape Town will be, that's the only yeah. place to host us. And uh, that'll be incredible. 
Yeah, so, so incredible. we must sign a petition for the DHL stadium to build a roof as soon as possible so they can really... Yeah, just yeah, have one of those... Isn't there like those roofs that are like... Yeah, yeah, yeah they I've must build that, one I've of those. I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going to do a makeshift one. They're going to do like a 10 billion rand tender and yeah. then just put up a yeah. piece of plastic. Yeah, just have, like, <laughs> yeah, just have some... Just have like a little net over there. <laughs> that is, that's very great to, to hear the like usually you are super right with predictions like that you are yeah i feel i i I have quite the tendency to to put things out there and yeah and uh visualize it and 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 it tends to happen so that's one thing that i really hope and believe that's going to happen yeah what are you looking forward to the most if you're looking at like this year obviously you have a big fight coming up um, you have camp starting, just the whole camp experience or the experience in the UFC. What are you looking forward to to the most out of the whole traveling? Just the fighting? whole experience. I think that's one thing that people miss. The whole experience, the fight camp itself, it's something that uh, is very sacred to me. Yeah. The fight camp, there's things that need to happen. There's things that I completely cut out. There's things that I completely will not cut out. There's things that I have to do mm. daily or I have to do weekly or and it's always fun. It's great. It's uh, it's almost like uh, my whole life shifts into fight camp mode. Yeah. And it's great. I enjoy it. It's a it's a different enjoyment. And there's there's a lot of tough times. Yeah. And it's tough. And it's but it's it makes me stronger as a person. Makes me stronger as an athlete. Every fight camp I get better. Yeah. Every fight camp I'm better than the one before. So that's something I always look forward to. And obviously the hype behind South Africa. Uh, getting behind me, getting behind you. We're yeah. fighting on the same card. It's yeah. going to be uh, UFC 282, another massive pay-per-view event, the last pay-per-view event of the year. And getting Africa on their feet and the 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 unity that a fight like that brings. Like mm. every time I fight, the unity it brings between there's just the whole nation gets together. It's like when the Springboks play. Yeah. The whole nation getting together. And no matter what your views are on on anything mm. it's your boy keep fighting in the ufc yeah and the whole world and everybody's behind it and just that's going to be insane and making history once again yeah. being the first in the top 15 and now being the first in the top 10 that's i mean that's what i do this for is for legacy and and leaving a legacy as the greatest to ever do this yeah. and this is part of that journey and just enjoying this whole experience i can't wait finding a guy like darren till is absolutely massive that's gonna be awesome ufc 282 i cannot wait i actually got you a small gift I think camp starts in, I think, seven days. Seven days. Yeah, six days. Six days. So you have six days to finish that bottle of wine and uh, then... And that's how you know Cameron knows me very well, even yeah. though he prefers Tull. This is my favorite <laughs> wine. We wouldn't love Tull. So please do not do what Paulo Costa does and drink... I'll make sure the wine like is that. finished before the fight. <laughs> so I don't have to cut weight and then can't sleep and drink a yeah. bottle of wine. I'll drink it tonight. <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Drinkers, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad that the stuff didn't break this time. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure our, our producer and editor is also very happy. He's sitting there with a massive smile on his face. Nick on rot. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for being a bit more professional this time. <laughs> Last time was terrible. <laughs> Just joking. No, it was a lot of fun. Thanks, Thanks for having me, MSP. Thanks. December 10th, we... Yes, I can't wait. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to check out the audio version, it's wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you want to watch us as well in our awesome Moral of Floral shirts, you can check it out on YouTube. Viva la loca. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Awesome. Beautiful. Survive donkeys. Thanks, thank you.